Hmm. Well, that's just wrong. It's got buffers and a knuckle. Everything has buffers and knuckles. Hmm. What's up, guys? This is Heiss, and today we're playing D-Roll Valley. Um, but we've got a couple of mods installed. That's right, we're gonna finally, uh... That's right, we're finally going to fix some of the things that I complain about with the game. Uh, via some mods that I downloaded on nexusmods.com. You can see the list of mods turned on. The air brake mod, skin manager, steam cutoff, and Zybox couplers. So, we have modifications to make the air brakes more realistic. We've added the couplers, and as well, made the cutoff work. Um, unfortunately, it doesn't seem that the skins worked, because I had a Rio Grande skin for this locomotive I was very excited about. But, uh, oh well, maybe another time. But you can see, I have the steam engine fired up. And we're at the oil well. And uh, if you watched my last episode, you might have an idea why. Midway through last episode, uh, there was a bit of an explosion. And uh, we got some cash, but, you know, let's, um... Oh. Yeah. Um, that's not gonna work. I'm limited. I have to pay just that much, because this is more than that. Which means that... I've been given free opportunities for carnage, and there's a lot of explodey boys around here, so I think we're going to be totally responsible and uh, not blow up the entire oil well. Nah, to hell with it, we're going to blow them all up. Oh, look at, look at the gauges! Look at that! They're still in bar, which is confusing, but we have working pressure gauges the right way. We have an independent brake gauge. Oh man, I'm gonna have to nerd out on these real quick. Uh, and by real quick, I mean after we blow things up, because, you know, we, we said that we're gonna blow stuff up, so we might as well blow stuff up and nerd out later. Also, the throttle operating the correct way is just a beautiful thing. Need to make sure we have enough coal for... Oh, good God. The pressure gauge is just... This is more realistic? Um... Well... I don't know about that, viewers. <laughs> we'll have a chat about that in a minute. But first, destruction. Alright, I think that's the track we wanted. Yeah, let's, um, let's do the thing. Thank you, insurance. All right, we're wide open. <laughs> oh, it's a little quick through yard switches. It's fine. It's fine. It's fine. It's fine. That's the most talkative the whistle's been in a minute. <laughs> oh, ooh, ooh, this is a lot of explosions. This is more explosions than last time. Oh god. <laughs> Look at the carnage! <laughs> oh man. Oh. Oh boy. Oh boy. Yeah, um... <laughs> still, still cooking off down there. One at a time. Hey! Dunk. One more. Come on, maybe? There we go. <laughs> I think we've, we've blown up everything we can blow up. What's the line? I'm never gonna financially recover from this? It's okay, insurance has got it. Unless they don't, in which case I'm making a big mistake and assumption about how the game works. Let's uh, let's go to the station and see what the, see what the damage is. Okay, still only need to pay that amount. Yeah, that's um, We'll do the Whoa! math. That's a lot of, that's a lot of, that's many millions, many millions of dollars of explosions. 
see about figuring out how to pay this, and then uh, we'll go from there. Okay, so I, I've paid as much of the fees as I can, and uh, they all got quite expensive quite quick, so we still have a good $34,000. But uh, we're now firing up a steam engine. We're at the harbor, teleported there. Figured we'd have the best chance at finding some really good jobs to do. And we found some pretty good ones going to food factory in town. You know, long hazmat. Sounds smart. You know, good train mass there. And uh, some more hazmat. So, you know. Anyways, uh, we are playing with the realistic steam mod. Fixes the cutoff. The air brake mod. And then knuckle couplers mod. And I've yet to play with any of these other than the realistic cutoff mod by accident once in my first video on Dero Valley. <laughs> Anyway, so I've just tossed a single scoop of coal in, opened the damper, and then uh, let it go. And, and it's kind of fun. You can see the, the different glow of the fire as the uh, temperature changes. That's a neat little trick. That's a good thing. Makes it feel a lot more accurate. We kick the blower on, and we can make the pressure gauge move very fast, which is a little terrifying. I didn't realize we had Chernobyl in the firebox. And we shut the blower off, and it instantaneously kills the steam generation, which is, that's uh, not quite right, but for the sake of a video game, we can live with that. And they've adjusted the MAWP, Maximum Allowable Working Pressure, and I believe it's even set as a variable you can change, but uh, they've changed it to 14 bar, which is a smidge over 200 PSI, which makes it a lot more akin to what I'm used to running. So, um, I kind of quite like that piece, but we'll, uh, we'll see how this all goes. Anyway, so, so let's look at our let's look at these air gauges real quick. So we have a uh, two duplex gauges, meaning that they have two hands and three bar a piece on uh, some of those settings. I wonder what that at. I need to I need to get good at converting bar to psi. I think someone said it's about 15 each, which would make some sense. Anyways, we have an independent brake pressure. There, so as we apply the brake, we can see the pressure comes up, and when we release the brake, it releases and goes to zero, which means we don't have any brakes on the engine cars now. Not that we have any cars. We have presumably main reservoir over there, so if we waste a bunch of air, that'll probably move. Well, it should, but it's still gaining. Oh, there we go. Yeah, fanning the independent like that wastes a bunch of air on the real thing. And then we have our automatic. Oh, okay. It is set up like a 6ET style automatic where it's non self lapping, which is interesting. Which means that, um, well, we're going to talk about this in depth in an upcoming air brake video, but basically, rather than being a region of how much pressure you can apply, you have a dedicated service portion that slowly decreases the equalizing reservoir pressure, which then decreases the brake pipe pressure as it follows and then you bring the valve over to lap and it holds whatever set you've taken and this is what the majority of steam locomotives have is a system quite like this and then you can release it by going all the way to the left and then there is the big hole <laughs> or dynamite or emergency or oh poop <laughs> if you go all the way you dump all the air so you set up all your brakes and we'll talk more about that uh, when we actually talk through 10 levels of air brake understanding in an upcoming video. So everyone seemed to really like the one that I did about steam locomotives overall. <laughs> if your pressure gauge drops that fast, you have a serious problem. And I mean, I guess it's accurate because you can't put that much water in the boiler that fast. Like it doesn't most changes on on locomotives and trains and everything is kind of glacial everything's super slow um and for the sake of a video game i can understand uh, having a lot faster control but that was just very silly to watch the pressure just disappear as you dump cold water in the boiler anyway let's get out on the table and we'll we'll start to go figure out where these cars are at uh, anyways, the one of the reasons why that that did that, sticking a cold slug of water in, this would have been a good topic to go over in the 
10 levels of Steam Engine understanding video, but it was kind of challenging for me to figure out exactly how much chemistry and, and hardcore science we wanted to get into, because uh, it kind of <laughs> was getting to that level where if you have a gas and a liquid, the same flavor, um, under pressure in a constrained vessel like a boiler, their temperatures and pressures are linked. So as the pressure increases, the temperature increases. As the pressure decreases, temperature decreases. So in, in the case of a steam, it, good lord, this is a sharp curve. Look at those drivers not even being anywhere near the rail. It's fine. <laughs> in the case of a steam engine, when you dump cold water from the tender into the boiler, you know, that is considerably hotter, the pressure goes down quite quickly. It's not that you're using all that steam running through the injector, not that there is an injector modeled on this locomotive, but um, it's not use of the steam, it's actually cooling the boiler off that causes the issue. All right, we're gonna get out onto the uh, the main track here and then uh, <laughs> stop and figure out where our cars are, I think. Thank you guys for the tips here because this has made it really easy to get all the jobs lined up. It's the FH80 right there. And the FH81, well, that's convenient. They're right next to each other. FH53, okay, there we go. So I think I'm gonna bring one string of the tankers first, and then the the boxes and containers, and then the other string of tankers. That way I've got an easy delineation on which job's which. So we're gonna line ourselves into this guy here, which is the FH53, yep. Oh, every time I, I, I keep saying 53 and it keeps making me think a hot fuzz. The time says 54 pages, but there's only 53! They're talking about the newspaper in the bar. <laughs> it's one of my favorite movies. Anyways, uh, let's get this thing backed up. And praise be, the throttle going the correct direction just makes me feel a lot better. God, this, this pressure gauge just wandering around however it wants is a little much. Even if you have a bad fire, it doesn't change that fast in real life. Alright. Let's get up to a good yard limit speed of very fast. I guess we could close the damper. We don't need all the steam. Um, if my fire changes that quick, I must have just dropped some liquid nitrogen on it. <laughs> okay. Uh, I'm going to have to stop making stupid comments about how fast the pressure is changing. Because that's just going to be the entire episode, if, if that's the case. Anyways. Gotta love backing up and not being able to see anything. I'm still not used to how stringy the whistle is. It's kind of weird. Alright. <laughs> <laughs> Pressure gauge all over the place. to get that little kind of in-between pitch and it didn't work. Oh, so we are using knuckle couplers, so I've yet to actually use these. I don't know how they work in-game. I couldn't find a cut lever or a pin lifter, so um, we'll have, just have to see. Oh, and I didn't check how the independent works. I don't know if it, it probably presumably works like the 6ET one does too. Yeah, where you slow app. No? Well, I should probably be looking at where I'm going, seeing as we're coupling into hazmat. <laughs> On 6ET, you have a, an independent brake. I believe it's the S6 valve. That uh, allows you to slowly or quickly apply the independent brakes for the locomotive and tender. And then slowly or quickly release it. And then lap where it holds the pressure. And... Uh, I was wondering if it would operate like that, or like the 26L style, where it's just a continuous amount of how much of a set do you want? 
but it doesn't seem to apply until you get far into it, so. It might be more like the 6ET, I don't know. Alright, we're gonna do a safety stomp here one car away. Um, as far as I can tell, you can't interact with the Knuckles in any way. So I'm gonna be quite disappointed if you could just back into it and just... It does the thing. Well, you can open up your angle cock through the knuckle. That's a neat trick. I'm gonna feel really stupid if I just bang the knuckles into each other and nothing happens. But, you know, I guess we'll live. We'll figure it out. Good four mile an hour is uh, maximum speed most people allow for coupling. So we're just gonna roll nice and easy and see what happens. Typically on a knuckle coupler, you'd have a pin that you could see on top. Um, and it's either operated from the top or bottom, allowing you to Okay, yeah, well, we don't have that. Yeah, typically you'd have to open the, the coupler first, at least one of them, and then uh, <laughs> pull the cut lever or the pin lifter, depending on who you talk to about how to, what it's called, then it would allow it to be uncoupled. But I guess we just have a pretty simple thing. That would be a fair bit to animate, I think, which is fair. This is a mod. This isn't like a, a developed feature, so... The fact that they left the buffers on is kind of cursed, but that's fine. Alright, cut the air in. We're theoretically charging by the sound of it. Or at least accurately that uh, the cars don't have their brakes set up. Because we have to charge them first. That's a, a big pain, particularly with newer style control valves on the cars. Is that you have to be coupled into the train for quite some time to actually charge up the brake pipe and the reservoirs on each car. You can't just knuckle in and go. And this time we, we can actually knuckle in now. Look at that. <laughs> so, making a lot of black smoke. One of the key points of the cutoff mod is that it, uh, it changes the stack behavior to theoretically be more accurate. So as you have more draft, the stack cleans up. And then as you get rid of draft, it dirties back up. That's actually pretty faithful, even. Like, that looks about right. That's a... That's a really nice job. Cheers to whoever made this. I think it's Zybok as well, but I have no idea if I'm saying his name correctly or uh, or any of that. So that's pretty cool. Oh, cr grade crossing. <laughs> that, that gave the Afari required uh, 20 seconds of minimum warning time. Guarantee it. Alright, so it's really cool if uh, they have the charging accurately simulated. And if I take the set, nothing happens. But it doesn't seem like that's the case. I am slowing down a little bit. Oh, well, we dumped it there. God, I wish it came back that fast. Or maybe they did simulate charging, because... Yeah, that's not doing much of anything brake pipe was zeroed out. That's actually really cool. Okay. Just slide them flat. It's fine. <laughs> Although, to be fair, we weren't actually sliding, so... <laughs> Alright, now we're gonna go pick up the next job, which I believe is on this track. And we almost slid through the crossing without protecting it. It's fine. Okay, kick the brake off. Put it in reverse and give it a little power. We are, it's set for 14 bar, but we had slightly more than 14 bar. I got them. <laughs> Doing the dance, these gauges. So, fun fact, the uh, the mod claimed that these are Janie couplers, or Janie couplers. Um, and they're not. <laughs> these look like AAR type E couplers, which are pretty common. They have E types and F types pretty much in the industry these days. And Janie couplers are... I don't know if they're the original patent for knuckle couplers or what, but they, they operate in a different manner than uh, than the uh, the modern day thing. And it, we can't even demonstrate that because we don't have pin lifters. Well, I can explain it in a second once we get this thing pulled out, out of the way. So normally you would have a pin lifter or cut lever that runs to the pin on the coupler that when you pull the lever, it pops the pin and it allows the actual fingers of the hand to open. And that's that's how it works for the modern style. Janey couplers have two levers, one on either side, and you either have to pull it or push it to release the pin, and then you have to manually open the finger. Um, if you're 
not pulling away. So you have to continuously hold out or in the lever so that you can actually uncouple. Whereas if you pull the pin lifter really hard on an actual knuckle coupler, the finger will just come freely open. So it's always a fun challenge when you're dealing with 1880s <laughs> vintage train coaches, that uh, passenger coaches that have the Janie couplers. And uh, <laughs> you go to uh, pull the pin and you don't know if you had to push or if you had to pull. You can tell with the size of the handles typically, at least that's what the, the Rio Grande did. But uh, if you don't know for sure, you tell the engineer to pull ahead and then you pull the lever out and uh, he's just tugging on the whole train and you can't do it. So you have to tell him to stop. Then you have to push on it and try it again, which is always a pain in the butt. That's why they went to the more modern style with uh, just pulling the pin lifter and then having the pin lifter kick the, the actual knuckle open. Again, these are not technically JD couplers. There's no pin lifter, of course, but they, they're also plainly modeled after like an AAR type E. And then the AAR is the American Association of Railroads for the uninitiated. It's a kind of a governing body of standards and everything for railroads. So everyone knows how to uh, maintain their trains and maintain other people's cars. Because fun fact, the uh, most train cars aren't owned by the railroad. You'll see plenty that are, but there's lots that are owned by third parties or, or other railroads or whatever. And so um, what happens when a Union Pacific train car breaks down, but it's it was in a BNSF train? You know, they can't tow it away because it's not safe for whatever reason because it broke in some fashion, right? So what do they do? Well, they follow the AAR guidance on how to maintain the car there's a standard of like okay well what are they doing well they're fixing they're fixing a grab iron they're fixing the steps oh these cars don't have those <laughs> you find something that does they're fixing a ladder they're fixing grab irons and steps okay well there's a an aar standard that says you have to do it this way it has to look like this you have to use these bolts and this steel and it it should take you this long and it should uh, cost this much for material, cost this much for labor. Everyone agrees to this, so guess what? Y you, you know, you just bill Union Pacific for fixing their car. And BNSF fixes the car so the train can keep going. And uh, Union Pacific then gets a, a car that's fixed and they get a bill. So that's one of the reasons that the AAR exists. It's quite a nifty thing and it really helps keep trains moving. We are not having enough steam pressure for this. This is <laughs> kind of interesting. That might be part of my problem with charging is I don't have enough steam pressure to make more air pressure. Because you gotta have both. We need the draft. There we go. Oh, you let the draft happen and then your pressure gauge explodes. Got it. And then the safety valve goes nuts. That's not how that works. That's okay. Safety valves usually have like a 5 PSI blowback in them so that once they lift, they continue lifting until they have reduced the boiler's pressure by about 5 PSI. It's, it's adjustable, but 5 is kind of the, the standards that I've seen. <laughs> and uh, yeah, the safety going, psh, 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 that's, that's not pretty accurate. Usually you're stuck listening to them for the next 30 seconds. So even a big safety takes a while to reduce the pressure. Oh, that was funny. As I slipped, the, the fire really got a lot more orange. Unprotected shove into an occupied track with hazmat on it. When did that go wrong? That's not gone wrong before for anyone, including me. <laughs> we charged up enough to be able to set the air from back here. Yeah, okay. That just the reduction in pressure is so different than what I'm used to. <laughs> it's gonna make switching a little interesting, I think, until I'm used to it. And now we have to shove through all these cars that are dynamited. <laughs> Which, that'll work, kind of. 
We're wasting coal and someone's gonna comment that, but that's fine. Okay, that's pretty good speed. If we're being honest. Got a lot of cars here. A lot of cars to go though. So we'll just ride the shove and knuckle in. <laughs> knuckle in indeed. <laughs> oh, that's fun. I like this. Um, it feels a lot more like home with Knuckles, even though there's no pin lifter and, and the buffer is still being there. It's kind of weird, but... Okay, coming in hot. Good, like, three miles an hour. Dump that. Bunk. There we go. Alright, and the air is now cut in. And it is cut in, right? Yes, yes, okay. And we're blocking a road crossing, like a good railroad again. Set the air up. Oh, so in a previous video, while we let this charge, I talked about how these are the wrong kind of valves. <laughs> and they are. Um, typically, you'd have cars that have angle cocks, where the angle piece and the valve are built in, and in line is cut in, and out of line is cut out. So, air pressure flows through. Yes, we have an arrow for that, but um, <laughs> which is a nice, cute little indicator. Most of the real ones don't have that, but... These are like more like cutout cocks, where in line is cut out and open is in. And it's kind of a weird delineation that doesn't make a lot of sense. And of course, because the Denver and Rear Grand Western was the epitome of perfect standard, everything making sense, they put cutout cocks on their locomotives instead of angle cars, instead of angle cocks, at least on the front. And so this would actually be cut in and we'd be allowing air to vent out and then that would cut out if you did it that way Which uh, they operate backwards of what an angle cock does, but <laughs> A little bit confusing and uh, as a new switchman that that was really fun to learn at the railroad museum because that's how that that's how they're set up Anyways, so we've got our jobs. We need to accept them and go But we need to go to the food factory. So I guess we'll run through the steel mill that seems to be the the smartest play. So we're lined out the right way. Okay. And now the clock is ticking. <laughs> okay. Oh no, but I just serviced this, which means that it uh, it delights the fire. It puts the fire out. That's not helpful. Relight, please. <laughs> and the air is resetting. Okay. Come on. Come on. Come on. Let's go. Give give me air. Okay. Drafts all the way up. Give us the blower. Give it the beans. Safety valve's going just plenty, that's fine. Let's get a little sand. This is a fairly heavy train, I don't know how it's gonna go. Was it quarter slipping? Oh, that's cute. The real ones will do that, too. How's our stack? Nice light gray, we can live with that. And we could probably turn the blower off, that's a little excessive. Oh. That's obnoxious. <laughs> I guess we could turn the blower back on because we've just cooled the boiler to death. But that's okay. I've got a, I've just got a valve for the pressure here. That's all the blower is. It's just like, boom, all of the pressure. Let's get out of the corner. Start expansively working the engine, which is the whole point of the cutoff mod. Oops, grade crossing. Close enough. All right. Let's see if we can't get this thing going. It's a lot of cars. I think it's a little bit over a thousand tons, but I've been told that the the steam engine is better with the uh, the new mod. So, oh, we're... the stack says no more coal, but the engine's saying feed me see more. Shut the sand off for now. Can I, can I get pressure back, please? You don't use the blower while you're running. It's just not a thing that you do. I guess you do in this mod, though. That's... And look! This pressure gauge is drunk. It's fine. 
And it, apparently it's coal, but it looks fine to me. Hello. Hello, Mr. Whistle. How are you? Have I heard about your lord and savior, the Whistle? The Toot? <laughs> okay. Well, this is moving. This is a lot of cars. To do a count here. Get some more water going. Bring the water down. Oh yeah, we're almost doing 50. Okay, let's bring the cutoff back pretty far. And we got the we got the throttle wide open now, so we're gonna try running with the bar. Not that it's a bar, it's a screw reverse, but you get the idea. I wonder what they, they changed the da dink to, because it doesn't seem to be the coal level. Which is kind of silly before. And the, bl the blower is really just OP. Oh well. But man, we're just walking away at the grade with this train now. Still popping the safety a bunch, but it's okay. <laughs> the whistle says, no, it, no it isn't. Well, you know, what does the whistle know? Slowing down, so I'm gonna give it a little bit more power. Allowing more steam to flow. And we slipped. I don't want that. Get the sand going. Oh yeah, listen to it work. That's cool. Alright. Nice light gray. Perfect, and now we've wa got a fair amount of water that so you can watch the level to disappear. Same with the pressure. <laughs> Dunk. That's so silly. <laughs> it feels like years you wait for the uh, water glass level to raise when you're actually using that. And uh, it just goes funk in the game. It eh, it's a little silly. Right up against the pops. Got a nice clean stack. We're falling off the train. Thank God we can teleport. Whistle says, "Yep." All right, we sped back up, so we'll roll the roll the scroll reverse back a little bit. Can hear the stack turns down. Can kick the sand off. Save ourselves some sand. And uh, we're just riding. This is cool. This is a lot of tonnage. Let's see, how many do we have? Good lord. Uh, 14 cars there. 5 cars, so 19 total. And then, goodness, that's a mess. Another 14, so... 20, uh, like 30... 33 cars? Yeah. We're slowing down so we give it a little bit more power. Get the sand on. Still running about clean. It's fine. God, this is cool now. This actually this feels a lot better. It feels like it's still a little heavy on the sand usage. You, with this much tonnage behind me, the the load should be dragging significantly enough that you d wouldn't need as much sand. Which sounds counterintuitive, but it's kind of how it works. We had a time when we were running 491 at the museum. Uh, we were doing Day Out with Thomas, where we shoved Thomas the tank engine around. And we'd been hauling 10 train cars up our 4% grade, 3.5% grade. It was about 4% then before we realigned it. But um, we're hauling 10 train cars and, you know, 300, 350 people, something like that. And it was just brutal. Um, tons of weight and you could really get the throttle pretty open pretty far on 491 you know because you're starting up on the hill but uh, I got so accustomed to opening the throttle as far as I did and then just taking off that like two weekends after we finished out with Thomas we pulled two cars and that was it and uh, yeah I was not I was not ready for that I had the muscle memory and I was like okay yeah I know how to run 491 pull the throttle open the same amount and I just did a complete burnout in place.
probably went, you know, a good 30 miles an hour, 40 miles an hour as far as the driver rotation went. So, yeah, the the tonnage affects um, tonnage affects how much your uh, tonnage affects how much throttle you can use. It's actually easier to run a tonnage train than it is a, a less than tonnage train. Because if you're at tonnage, I mean, you can you could just rip it wide the hell open and and it won't slip. Assuming good rail conditions and good suspension and, and everything else. And then you really only need the sand as you're going around curves or if you encounter weird spots on the track. But yeah, they will do a burnout in place if, uh, <laughs> if you overcome that. So, super neat. This is a pretty chunk of railroad through here. Running with the fire door open, but it doesn't seem to mind. Safety's still popping every two seconds. Got the spooky sounds, but we're only doing like 44. I did see another mod that changes it from kilometers per hour to miles an hour, and I kind of thought about picking it up because uh, that would make my commentary easier. Because every time I go to say, oh yeah, I'm doing this many miles an hour, and then realize that it's KPH, not MPH. Whistle agrees, maybe I should download it. <laughs> That's funny. We're still on a 1.1% grade. A lot of tons. How, many, how much tonnage is behind us? 462 tons on that one. 165 there. 666 right there. So we're talking about maybe 1,200, 1,300, somewhere in there. Tons of train. That's a pretty sizable thing. fire temp doesn't change that much when you get more draft going. That's kind of weird. For all the other gauges wandering all over the place, you would have thought that would have done something more. This is just a good slog now. Like, this feels really nice. Light gray haze. And it comes in and out. I kind of wonder why that is. Typically, I mean, if, you're, if your draft is pretty constant... Um, the smoke slowly fades to clear, and then when you get to clear, you need to put more coal in because you've got uh, you're about to have a thin spot, about to have a hole, a hole to the grates holes, which can uh, can cause a lot of problems. Whistle agrees. Okay, let's see. So our last stretch of stuff needs to go to C4 inbound, and then. D2 inbound for the front set and C6 inbound for the middle set so we'll have to see what that all means when we get there we're yeah okay we seem to be doing fine with less pressure so and now the blower valve's not doing anything which is fun maybe I wonder if it's a ma uh, massive fire problem or what Perfectly clear stack. Toss the scoop on. Stays pretty clear. Pretty sure we can be going this fast through here, right? We got a lot of train, though. I'm doing 60. I think it said we could do 70 a while back, so I'm going to keep the power down. We've had it wide open for quite quite some time, and we've been running at the bar, which... That's cool. That's I mean, that's really what this is all about. As we talked about in the 10 levels of Steema Understanding video. It's the 10th level, right? keep the throttle wide open and then use your expansive working to do what you got to do although now now we're getting up to too much speed so I can dial the throttle back and in fact shut it off and just let it ride I suppose <laughs> supposedly can go to 80 but I don't feel the need to because I know I've binned it on this switch up here before even on camera <laughs> 120. Ooh. Yeah, that uh, sounds like a level of spice that I don't need in my life. So we'll just uh, we'll just let it roll. 
presumably the train's charged. We didn't do an automatic terminal or a, a terminal air test to confirm that, which was probably a mistake, but not that you can see what the brake cylinders are doing in this game. Before any train has to leave um, its initial terminal, you have to go through a pretty extensive air brake test to make sure everything's all set up so you don't end up, you know, running away or crashing or all that fun stuff. And then anytime you change the consist, you have to do that too. Why are, why are you falling off? Why, I'm not you. My throttle is shut. Why, why is the pressure gone? Doesn't make any sense. <laughs> Nothing is using steam. Where did the steam go? Does not compute. All right, well, let's see if we can't set up some air. Oh, that we dumped it. We don't want to do that. Set them up. Okay. That's confusing. My equalizing reservoir has gone down, but usually the brake pipe just kind of goes at the same speed. But that they were kind of going in opposite directions each other, which didn't make a heck of a lick of sense. It's got to be a pressure related thing when it does the bell now. But it's okay, I have a magical wand that can increase the pressure to MAWP just by sneezing at it. Yeah, so the the mods, I mean they're they're making it more accurate, but it's not necessarily accurate still. Which, I mean, we have the conversation all the time, you know, it's a video game, it's meant to be fun, you don't want to have it be work. You don't, ha you don't actually have to deal with a terminal air brake test if you're just trying to play trains for an hour in Derail Valley, you know? That just sounds like a pain in the butt. That's no fun. But we have to do it in the real thing, so it's not accurate, right? Well, what, what's the balance level? That's always the, uh, always the fun question. One that I ask myself often, because I like to nitpick all these things and, and find the, the, the best answer, but it can be a little challenging, huh? All right, well. I'll just uh, kick the blower off. <laughs> and we'll take a little set. Okay, setting the air up. I don't know, uh, uh, half a bar. Half a bar should be like seven and a half pounds or seven pounds or something like that. That's a pretty common set. About five PSI is what you want to start with. A lot of valves don't even want to work until you've given them five. That seems to be holding us where we need to be. More or less, he says, increasing in speed. Oh, I wonder if I left my caboose at the steel mill. That could be a problem. My caboose might still be on the main. I don't know where it is. <laughs> I think he can call it with the call crew van function. But, um, yeah, I haven't, uh, haven't done that. Good god. And there's the pressure again. Came back up. Right quick. Oh, now the set's really biting me, so we'll kick it off. What do we got going on up here? Well, we're not even lined for the steel mill, which is a problem. What's going on up here? Okay, we are lined in for the main. I could have sworn my caboose was stuck in, in here somewhere. But I guess not. I have no idea where the caboose is then. I haven't seen it in a couple episodes. <laughs> oh, we've... <laughs> Takes a minute for that uh, air to reset through that many cars. Well, probably not going to get the bonus timer on these. Which is partially a problem, because we do need... Uh, do need to be making the monies. <laughs> we've got a... Uh, couple hundred thousand to go so getting the uh, bonus timers would help oh well and you can see the uh, the change in the fire that's really cool even if it's just a temperature a color thing that's still so helpful to have some indication of of what the fire is doing without needing a UI coughs looks at own game <laughs> I 
Okay. Falls off again. I really wish I could have gotten the skin to work. Apparently people, um, on, yeah, Whistle agrees. On Nexus mods, we're saying that none of the Steam engine skins work for some reason. Let's take a little set. Let it propagate. Lap it. See what it does. Hasn't bit in yet. I don't tend to operate trains this long, so it's weird to have to really wait for the air to propagate back. And I mean, I'm talking about real ones, not simulated ones. I think the most cars I ever got to run with was with the 20 at the uh, Cumbres and Toltec. We had something like 14, 15 cars. Air gauge trains are short, particularly when you're on a small circle of track at a museum. Alright, we're going to set up a nice big matey set here. Lap it. Still didn't give the FRA required 20 seconds. Oops. <laughs> to be fair, I don't know if that's actually a 20 second requirement for the train crew or if it's just for the warning devices like flashing lights and whatever, because that's what I have to deal with in the signals world. And uh, we're off roading, it's fine. MOW needs to come out and deal with that. And it's finally kind of thinking about slowing us down, so I guess we'll kick it off and let it recharge. <laughs> this view always makes me crack up. Keep it going, get the power down. Most of the trains gotta be past that, right? We're in the 70 here. Perfect. Got plenty of water, plenty of fire, pl plenty of pressure. Plenty of coal by the look of it. Black rolling out the stack. It's never good. Now we're going a little quick. Whistle says yes we are. I don't genuinely know which one of these is supposed to be which. Because it doesn't quite act like the real thing. Well, let's set them up a little bit more. Good, we dump it and it immediately comes back. There's a lot of features on a lot of modern day valves where if you go into emergency, the, the control valves on the cars will hold thing open so if you go into emergency you, you stop there is no coming back but with the super old valves that a lot of the cars at the museum have you can actually go into emergency and then release out of it really quick ask me how i know it's one of those moments where uh someone lubricated the automatic mid midway through the day and i'd been used to it uh, being really like hard to move and uh, it moved quite freely all of a sudden without anyone telling me. And uh, yeah, it uh, went, went into emergency, kicked it all the way over to overcharge, and <laughs> got it back. And, you know, made lots of loud noises and watched the cars, you know, stutter a little bit. And it wasn't the best ride anyone had had, but we didn't stop, so we didn't look too bad. It's my way of saying, nobody's perfect. Certainly not me. All right, still got a 70, and we're doing a good 65 here. And watch the pressure not disappear. I guess oh, I don't have any blower on. Interesting. Yeah, there's a lot of quirks with these steam mods. Getting a little spicy through there. It's fine. We're not even doing 70, though. Why the spicy? It's probably gutsy to be running 70 with this many cars. I 
I'm not even sure if I'm going to make the bonus time anyways. Alright, we got a speed sign coming up. 60. Yeah, we'll, we'll pinch him down. Quick emergency set. Quick release. Quick emergency set. <laughs> Lap it. Fanning the brake valve like that is the quickest way to dump all of your main reservoir pressure. And then you have a runaway train if you're going downhill. It's a really easy way to do that. The whistle says yes, I agree. Okay, we're not not lined into the oil well. We've had enough explosions for one one episode here. I know Jamie want big boom, but Heist can't afford it. <laughs> oh, we probably didn't need that scoop of coal. That's fine. A lot of times the uh, the engines back in the day used to have little sayings uh, painted on them to make sure that you were not wasting the company's dollar and it would say like, you know, save a scoop a mile. <laughs> Something the rear grand engines had a lot. Do we need to go left here? Where are we going? Why is there a junction here? Yeah, we do. An oh, we were at Goods Line for Goods Factory in town previously. It was the previous junction. I had my junctions confused. Oh, we're getting close. Okay. Good. Where's my switch remote? Should probably have that in the <laughs> spot number two. Not the uh, <laughs> locomotive remote that we can't use on the steam engine. Thank God. Nobody's equipped the <laughs> the valves with servos and whistle says, "Yeah, don't don't put a servo that controls me." One of these days, I'll do a video talking about whistle signals. They're really complicated. Uh, just because they vary by railroads, so I can't just say, well, this is what the whistle signal means. So it'd be good to get a couple folks from a couple different railroads and kind of talk about the differences and, and what what railroad used what. I know what the Rio Grande and Cumbres and Toltec and the uh, Railroad Museum use, of course, but that's just what I know in my experience, so the <laughs> each one's different. The one that's really prevalent, though, is the, the grade crossing whistle that I keep talking about. But long, long, short, long. Anytime we're given the warning, and I believe that actually came from a, a British naval practice. It was like um, it was meant to say, like, "Hey, but give uh, give preference to the queen. The queen was going to be coming through, so it was like, God save the queen,' or something like that." I'm probably messing up my history, and I have a, a lot of people that know a lot more about the UK than I do. Uh, and trains from the UK in particular on my channel, so uh, if one of you guys knows the background of that, hey, feel free to share it. We'll pin it. But that was that was always been my understanding, and it might be an old wives' tale, but who knows? It's a neat story at the very least. Okay, I think it's up past that bridge. Yeah. So then we gotta figure out where all the different stations are. Last time we tried to do that on the fly, we ended up doing it poorly. So we got two jobs that go to C and one job that goes to D. So that shouldn't be too bad to do. That's at the back. Goes into C4 inbound. The front goes to D2, so I think we'll pull through. Um, and drop the rear off. Then back the second job into C6. And then back the third job into D, whatever it is. The throttle wide open. Must be slogging up a bit of a hill. I haven't seen a sign in a second. It's always fun. If you have the throttle this far open and you touch the Johnson bar or the score reverse, it tends to want to fling one way or another. Although piston valves are better than D valves on that, but I've certainly made a, uh, made a 491 slip by grabbing the bar when I shouldn't have. We uh, tend to end up stopping either uphill or downhill at the museum with how the, um, how the track is set up. Woo woo indeed. Gotta slow down to 30. But uh, <laughs> it was always funny when I was learning to run, uh, you know, you'd have people watching over your shoulder for the first long while and then you'd start to get to do solo trips and the old uh, CMO Jack used to watch and 
see how people were doing and he always <laughs> he came up to me the one day and he's like you're boring now it's like what do you mean I'm boring and he goes you've got it figured out you're boring it's more fun to watch you mess up oh okay <laughs> but yeah he came he came up to me one day I was coming into the station with 491 and it, it might have been the Thomas train it might have been a lot of cars and uh I had the throttle open just far enough that when I went to put the bar back towards the corner to get the most power for stopping on the hill and working against the brakes, um, 491 put it where she wanted, and it went all the way in the corner, and I had enough throttle that I just slipped like a mad. A little bit of fanfare on the way in. Not unsafe by any means, of course, but not the best for the equipment, and uh, <laughs> most of the people just thought it was a, a show it's kind of one of the weird things about being in the preservation side of things with folks that don't know um that don't know the equipment or don't they're so removed from train anything anymore that uh like they just assume that oh well it, it did it like that's just old train stuff that's that's what happens with old trains it's like well no that was the engineer making a mistake that, that you you shouldn't be doing a burnout on the way and it's not that the engine's working hard it's that's like what happened right the engineer goofed up in this case it was me um etc and uh we're gonna leave we're still kind of far out i think when we get towards the bridge i'll hop out and try and line the switches because we're we got 30s through here and the whistle says woo woo which is never good so we'll just dump the air and then lap it dump the air lap it Grab the independent, dump the air, and leave it dumped, and lap it. Okay. Yeah, this is um really slow to react with as many cars. I'll have to get used to it. Because usually you can get a pretty good feel what's going on pretty easily. Oh, yeah. <laughs> There's the set. Come on. <laughs> I guess it doesn't matter if I put <laughs> ruin the wheels on this because I can't pay for them anyway. Already had insurance, so we can watch it quarter slip and do a burnout. There we go. It's not quite as violent as that when it, they quarter slip, but it's it's a little bit smoother in transition in and out. But they they do actually do that. It's always kind of funny. All right, well, now that we're running so slow, the track is submerged in the bridge there. That's funny. Okay. So, first job on the rear is C4. Okay. So, we don't want to go to the station. We're going to go into C4. And I somehow doubt that we're going to get the bonus for all three of these jobs, but we might get the first bonus, maybe. I don't know. I've been recording for a while, though. <sighs> we'll see. We just run it out of pressure. Yeah, it figures. And the whistle says, yes. Yes, you have run me out of pressure. But it's okay. I have a magical valve that just immediately makes the pressure explode. So we'll open that all the way. There we go. The blower does not do hardly any of that. The blower is an itty bitty little pipe that dumps into the smoke box. I mean, it's itty. I mean, it's like inch or inch and a quarter pipe, and so it really, really just does not have that much of an effect on the uh, on the draft. It does. I mean, it's significant while you're standing, but compared to what the exhaust can do, it really doesn't do that much. I would like to not come off the track here. Could we get some amount of air brakes happening? kick it off so we don't stop immediately and by immediately I mean in six years that was spicy blown up enough hats met today oh we got a crossing here we go that was kind of gross but it worked all right set him up
Yeah, I need to read how they set up this air brake simulation because I don't understand exactly what it's doing. What I'm learning is I should stop trying to just make content without understanding what I'm going to do. And then I'd have a better time. <laughs> okay, I'm just going to dump it. Because presumably the whole rear is going to be in shortly. Or actually, that's a lot of cars. <laughs> so I guess we'll kick it off. We're still going 40, though. Leave it dumped. Set up the independent really hard. Alright. It's a lot of cars. This is a lot of terrain. This is probably the most cars I've ever run in this game. Keep it rolling at that speed. Because I think we still needed to get the last couple cars in. Okay. And then, uh, close the one angle cock. Come on. Pop the neck. Knuckle. As so that dumps. And then that car, Consist, will stop. We're conveniently right by the station. That's not the station. It just looks a heck of a lot like the station. It took me forever to figure it out where it was on the live stream when I was at this location. I don't remember where the station is. I think it's down this way somewhere. There we are. <laughs> Did we do it? Holy crap. Only 33 minutes? We might get all the bonuses. Okay. Well, now we got to switch fast. That's never a recipe for disaster, is it? And we're still all rolling up here, so we'll let that roll. While we figure out C6, yeah, right here. Okay, and it's already lined. We just gotta get past this last switch. So we'll keep pulling through it. Put it in the corner, just get after it here. Okay. Teleport through the tunnel. <laughs> Gross. Just one car to go. Come on, come on, come on. Please, 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 please. It's made by Krugman Electronics. Oh, it's the load. Okay. Well, I guess we'll get back through the tunnel and then sort it out from there. Oh, hang on, it might... We have a semblance of being able to go forward. Get it right on the edge of slipping here. And just... Give me all the pressure. <laughs> is that the safety valve or is that bizarre... <laughs> chuff events, valve events happening? Oh, we're running against the brake. Which was interesting that it was doing that. Okay. Whatever. Okay. Well, we just had to back up and start it. Got me all worked up over nothing. Okay. Now we will back these cars in. We still might make the bonus on this one. I kind of doubt we'll make the bonus on the other one, though. Too many keyboard controls at once, everyone. And I guess we'll save ourselves some amount of trouble cut that off and we'll kick him later bye choo choo <laughs> although that steep grade makes that a little difficult oh but uh, that was the switch that I needed to take so I guess we'll have to pull ahead just a smidge unless I can that's gonna cause multi-tractor I think I can smell it so we'll pull ahead anyways <laughs> and we almost have these cars in all right let them roll if I was really smart, I would have gone up and pulled that ahead. Or closed that angle cog, I actually would have been smart. But that'll be what ruins our bonus here. Let's see if I can't go do that right now, because right now the brake pipe is just venting right now. Which is not what we want. Those cars are stopped. So we'll teleport into the back of this boxcar and not be able to go anywhere. 16 times over. 
naturally. Okay, I'm gonna grab the job and validate. Did that count for the bonus? 49602. Oh yeah, it did, sick. Bye. Technically negative six seconds, but yeah, we know that we're not going to make that last bonus, which means that's that's fair. We didn't blow up any more hazmat, which is all I can really ask for, I think. Because we had two hazmat consists. <laughs> Alright, that should be enough to get us off the switch. Got it through the other way. We'll teleport under the game level again. Kick the brake on. Get the throttle open pretty far. Back it up. <laughs> Poor wheels. They'd be shelled to death, I think. There's a, a fun... It's not fun, but an interesting wheel condition called shelling, where you, you rip bits of the tread out, typically due to high torque or high speed applications, where you actually get a uh, slip dislocation of the grain structure, the, the metal, and it leaves the wheel behind on the rail. It was something really common I saw all the time at BNSF. You'd have shell spots on the, uh, the tires, or the wheels, I guess, in the case of a diesel, but... And yes, trains have tires. We didn't even, didn't even get into that on the, the 10 levels of steam understanding video. Because guess what? There's about a thousand levels, and, uh, we couldn't talk about them all in one video, so... Okay, and we are lined into D2, slowly wandering back, and then, uh, and then we'll see where our finances sit after this. Which, um, the answer is still probably going to be not good. Overall, I think this has been fun with the with these mods. There's some quirkiness to them, and I definitely need to understand the air brake a little bit better. Um, I know it's non-self-lapping unless you have the DE6, and then the DE6 does self-lap like a modern type of air brake, but I'm not entirely certain how they have it simmed. And maybe with, a f with fewer cars it makes more sense, but... That's a pretty slow rate of... Well, I guess the gauges are moving slowly, but bar is a lot more, so... <laughs> Used to... A lot less, uh... The gauge moves faster, but it's through smaller units, so... Anyways, that's all parked there. Find our way to the station. There's no black curtains in it, so it's not a very good station, but what are you gonna do? And base pay for that. So how's our wallet sitting? Oh, almost 200 grand. How's our fees sitting? Oh, almost 200 million. Eh, that's what insurance is for. Uh, we started clawing our way out of debt. We successfully ran two hazmat jobs. And we got to play with somewhat accurate knuckle couplers and an updated steam engine. Good bit of fun. Thanks for the mod suggestions, everyone. I've been appreciating that, so... Anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Uh, make sure you like it. Make sure you subscribe to the channel if you did uh, and you want to see more. And make sure you click the bell as well to ensure you get uh, all the notifications on when I'm going to be posting content. So, uh, again, thanks for watching, everyone.